much out of the meat. I think so. Okay. So, Jonathan, are you on the line? Can you hear us? Hey, how's it going, you guys? Uh, you know, it's it's definitely going. Uh, lots of uh, transition and change, and I'm glad that you're you're here with us uh, on the show. I know that you and I are going to do more um, official, you know, uh, uh, webinars with each other to you know really get more into the depth yeah. of each other's work, but. This feels like a really good way for you to um, uh, to get to know kind of what's going on and what we're doing and uh, and where we're at. So I'm glad that you're here. Yeah, I, I'm really honored to, to be here with you guys. And I, I had no idea it was your, your final show, so I kind of feel uh, really special to be able to share this with you guys and, and to be able to be a part of, of the transition you guys are making. So... No, thank you for having me here, and I'm, you know, just happy to share in the love and, and um, you know, hopefully be able to connect with your people and maybe share some value. So. Well, great. Why don't yeah, we introduce? Why stuff. don't Why don't we introduce you to everybody? Since not everybody knows that that you are Jonathan Mead of the blog IlluminatedMind.com, and if you have not yet checked out Illuminated Mind, uh, do it. It's uh, every single time that I read something from you, Jonathan, I'm just like, yes, right on. I set, I set up your blog uh, RSS feed to post automatically to my Facebook wall so that I don't miss any oh, posts. Oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah, and it's and great. And so that wow. people will think that you are that smart, right? No, people, <laughs> people it's funny because it started with Leo Babauta. I, I did Zen Habits. I posted his RSS feed, and then he started doing guest posts from you. I love all your stuff. So I, then I, you guys are the only two that post to my wall automatically. And, you know, people wow. are always like, oh, man, I love your posts, you know. And I'm like, easy. It's not me. You know, if you actually read it, it's written by somebody <laughs> else. So it works for me, though. I definitely uh, I love reading it. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's such an honor. Wow. I, I had no idea. I feel, I feel really honored to uh, be able to, you know, share my stuff with your, with your readers and, uh, you know, Make them feel like you're impersonating me. So that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> a lot so, of people feel. A lot of people email me and they think I'm Jonathan Fields, so they'll ask me questions funny. about. And then I'll just I'll just answer as him. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, it's going great. So so, so how long have you been? Cool. How long have you been blogging at Illuminated Mind? Yeah, so it's been about three years. Uh, it'll be three years. Uh, like on an official level anyway, uh, this coming May. And uh, it's been it's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of uh, transformation. And like I'm, I'm sure you guys can relate, a lot of just kind of unfolding of, of uh, stepping into my purpose in a deeper way and really kind of going through a lot of internal shifts and external shifts and, and really just seeing you know where this where this path takes me and it's been a lot of a lot of fun so far so what was the do you want me to tell people yeah go ahead oh, i was just gonna say do you want me to tell people a little bit about like the message and, and everything absolutely yeah well what i was gonna ask is like what was the impetus to start it and yeah share what it's a little mm -hmm. a little bit about what it's about yeah so the impetus it's interesting because it's it's a little bit different than it is um, where it's at today. As I'm sure, like you guys know, nothing is is really static. Um, but where where it started was just kind of this burning desire that I had to really find a way to both um, give back with all of the all of the value that I had been um, receiving in terms of personal growth and. And, you know, really, really living my life to the fullest. And I wanted to find a, a vehicle to be able to, to give back and to be able to serve um, the community. So that's, that's kind of what sparked it. And that was kind of like the seed that, that started it. But since then, it's kind of grown into something more. And now it's, it's more about helping people find out what their passion is in terms of how they want to serve the world and, you know, really craft an offer to the world 
involved in a conscious way so they can, you know, present that to other people confidently and, and to be able to make that their livelihood uh, as well. You know, so many people that I talk to, like, they have some type of idea, they have some type of vision, but they don't know how to present it to others and, um, you know, get them to see the value in it. So that's, that's kind of what, what it's turned into, and that's what we're, we're focusing on right now. And so, Jonathan, is it illuminatedmind.com or .net? Oh, it's .net. Yeah, I think illuminatedmind.com sells like candles or something. <laughs> yeah, for some reason and, I thought and, it was right, .net. Every time I see it, I'm like... And let yeah, me, let, let me just... Yeah, every time I see it .com, I'm like, man, like, this is, this is not as important, but... Uh, well, yeah, I want to I want to start with that question because a lot of folks, I think, are um, uh, stopped in moving forward with their vision when, like, their favorite yeah. URL is not available. Oh man, that's the worst. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like, oh, forget it. I'm just not gonna do it then. Right, the whole business is off. Uh, done. Yeah. Um, but you you chose to um uh, move forward and just choose the .net instead of the .com. Do you do you like? Did you have any challenge around that decision at all or was it pretty uh like just something you made the decision um, and did it i guess i looked at like zenhabits.net and problogger.net and i thought if they could you know be okay like i don't think leo's having any trouble getting readers with net so i figured if he could do it um you know i could too and I don't know. I mean, some. I'm sure some people do type in .com and they don't find us. But yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. Like, how much do you want the name, and are you willing to to deal with that? I don't think it's really impacted us that much because most of the people just come directly, or they come from links from other places. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so when you first started out three years ago, you were not blogging about business, right? You were blogging about your right. own personal growth journey and um, uh, more, you know, internal development. Is that is that accurate? Yeah. So when I first started, it was about self development and it was about personal growth. And you know, throughout writing and throughout working with people, um, what people most responded to was finding their passion and finding meaning in their work. And I kind of joke around sometimes with people that I was kind of like forced into my purpose against my own will. Um, what? Because I, 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 I felt like it was narrow and I felt like, you know, I wasn't, you know, the most qualified person to help people with that. And eventually, you know, the universe kept saying like, no, this is, this is what you're supposed to do. And I would try to go in other directions and it would fail or, you know, not get as much of a response. And I just started testing it out and helping people with that. And I, I ended up having to just, you know, come to terms with the fact that this is what I was supposed to do. And that, um, you know, business, as I'm sure both of you guys know, is one of the, the biggest vehicles for self-development. Thank you. And for personal growth. We love that. We see entrepreneurship as an evolutionary pathway, is what we say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing that helped me kind of, you know, wrestle with it internally and, and come to terms with it. The other thing was just, you know, basing um, my own competence, not on, like, my years of degrees or... Um, you know, the multi-million dollar businesses that I had created, which I haven't, but helping other people and getting them results and getting them breakthroughs. And, and if I can do that, then, you know, that's good enough for me in terms of my credentials, yeah. so to speak. And I'm wondering if you experience any, any pushback at all from your audience when you made the move into talking more about business or when you made the move more into monetization of, of, of the blog? Because I imagine also when you started yeah. out, you weren't selling anything, and now you are. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's just, you know, it's one of those things where, 
if you don't have a lot of business background and you just get into blogging, like you often think that you can just blog and then like money will appear. And <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I thought in the beginning, you know, naively. And yeah, I, I did have to, you know, I thought I was going to do AdSense or advertising or something like that, which wasn't very effective. Um, so yeah, I did have to adjust and actually come up with a, with a business model, not just a traffic model, um, which I think a lot of people have, like they just have traffic and they don't have a business model. And it's, it's kind of like, you know, a grocery store opening up and trying to get a lot of people to come, but they don't have any like, uh, food or they don't have a means of accepting money from people. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's one thing that I, that I realized, like I, you know, I naively, um, thought in the beginning I could just put up ads and I went through a process of, you know, moving from that to selling ads privately and then moving into affiliate partnerships and then moving into eventually just creating my own products. And I think one of the things that I was kind of lucky with is that I tried to engage my readers in the creation of my product. Mm -hmm. So when I put it out there, they were expecting it. They felt like a part of the story of it. They felt like a part of the process. And I think it wasn't as alarming as if I would just have said, you know, hey, I created this product. Now, bam, here's a sales page. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really feel yeah. like you did it in the right order um, with first focusing on traffic. <clears throat> and um, and and building a really solid community of people interested in what you were all about, and then uh, engaging them in a process of shifting into selling things based on what they wanted, and and then uh, easing into um, and into making offers, and uh, and and now shifting the focus more to helping them. Uh, make their offers. I do. I want to let you know one way that um, that you helped me recently. You don't even know this, but you had that uh, logo contest. Not logo contest, but that thing where you put out you know the three different logos and um, right. yeah, and ask for feedback on them. And in in my lawyer business, we're undergoing a um, we're creating a new brand and some new courses. And um, we had a, a logo design contest. And internally, we were stuck. We you know, everyone uh -huh. on our team liked something different. And so I went to the team and I said, okay, I want to, I want to invite our community to vote. And one of the gals on my team and my best friend and, and partner, she said, no, no, this is going to come across <laughs> as, I can't remember, sophomoric and, um, uh -huh. you know, whatever. She had some, some, uh, judgments about it. And I, and I just remembered back, you know, I've seen other people do it as well, but you most recently, and I remembered back to you doing it and, uh -huh. and, and really felt like, no, we're going to, we're going to do this. We're going to engage the community. And, um, yesterday we, we put out, we put out an email to them and we gave them something. So for everybody who voted, uh, on which logo they like better, I'm going to host a free call for them, um, on growing their business. Okay. And, um, uh, and, but really thinking back to you doing it, like really allowed me to go back to her and say, I understand that you are concerned about how we're going to do this, but it's really important for us to do it. And we've gotten great feedback and really engaged the community. And so that came directly from watching you do it and saying yes. So thank you. Yeah, that, that is, that is so cool. I think there's so much opportunity for, um, you know, creating that sense of community and, you know, whether it's little things like, you know, having people vote on a logo or something more in depth like like surveys and, and stuff like that. I think it's, it's just awesome when you can make people feel like a part of your product because they're more likely to want to support it. They're more likely to want to share it with other people, um, you know, rather than it just being kind of like this, this cold... Um, process where they just, you know, are presented an offer kind of out of the blue and, and there was no kind of warm up period. It's kind of like, you know, dating, dating someone and like within the first five seconds, they just try to like make out with you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. And that's <laughs> been part of my actual, um, uh, 
my part of my personal growth journey because I have been um, the type of person who I try to go too deep too fast because of some of the stuff that we talked about in the first hour some of my own insecurities and abandonment stuff and um, uh, so I um, uh, you know have, have uh, brought that into my business and specifically with my blog, I think, you know, in my, in my businesses, I've been, you know, very highly successful with selling things and building the business model, et cetera. And, but on my blog, I have not done a good job of not, you know, just selling stuff in awkward moments. <laughs> Not managing the community well, making like sharp hairpin right turns without any warning whatsoever, not being consistent with my messaging. And so I, I guess part of what I want to know from you is on the blog itself, have you like been strategic in terms of, um, okay, now, the, here's what the next three blog posts are going to be to prepare people for this turn. And how far out are you strategic with respect to the, the content delivery and, and, the, and the making the offers on your blog? Yeah, that's something we've really tried to work on in the past year. Um, before that, it was a little more haphazard. Um, or, or we did do that, but it was like on accident and it wasn't intentional. So, um, this past time with Trailblazer, we really tried to plan it out like about a month in advance of content and leading people up to, um, the offer. And I, it doesn't have to be anything like huge. You can start out with just dropping hints or, you know, building curiosity about something. It doesn't have to be like this epic piece of content, you can, you know, prime people's appetite or, or um, build their interest with little small things like, you know, telling them something is coming, but like, you're not going to tell them what yet because it's too soon or something. And, uh, you know, it, I think it, how much you do that really kind of depends on the weight of the offer. Like if it's something um, really big and it's really, really important to you and maybe it's a high ticket thing or it's really foundational to your business, you probably want to spend at least a month like warming up um, people to it with the content. But if it's something smaller like a webinar, um, you probably don't need as much time out to like a week to two weeks or so. And so this is very consistent uh, with kind of how I treat my, my email lists. and. Uh, I'm wondering, but with my blog, I've, it's almost like my blog has just been like a space for me to be super messy and like whatever's kind of going on inside of me. Um, and so I'm, 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 yeah. I'm wondering at what point you began to move people from your blog to just blog communication over to an email list also communication and how you navigate the intersection between those two. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it, it can be kind of messy. I, I totally get that. Um, you know, I'm certainly not a master of that either. And sometimes, you know, we we don't do the best job in the world in terms of syncing them up completely. But one thing we try to do is um, have them be integrated. So, like when we're when we have an important blog post. Um, and we're not making an offer quite yet, and we're in that kind of build-up stage. We would send, we would create a blog post that's like getting them introduced to the core concept of the offer, or getting them introduced to the core message, or you know the purpose, or something like that. And then we would write an email that's very short. That the goal is just to get them over to the blog post. So. Mm -hmm we're still engaging them on the email list. Um, and the goal is to get them to take some sort of action in the email by clicking over to the website. So that, so that way when we do release an offer, there is still, 
know, an expectation of there being a call to action to, to click on something, you know? yeah. And how are you getting people from your blog to your email list? And how good have you been at that? Or do, or do you find that most people are reading you on RSS? Or what has been your strategy? Yeah, we don't even focus really on RSS anymore. We focus mostly on, yeah, like 90% of our efforts are on email. So for traffic that comes to the blog and the website, um, we have a sidebar ad that, that we use. We also have um, uh, a plugin that's called Tippity that works pretty well. And it's it's not one of those annoying popovers that like shows up immediately when you when you show up. It actually only shows up once you get to the end of the content, hmm. and it has a better conversion rate um, because of that. And it only shows up once, so if the person does an opt in, it doesn't show up again. Ah, and so, it's called Privity? It's called Privity, like, um, kind of like Privity Long, long Stocking. Yeah. P-I-P-P-I-T-Y. Pippity. Yeah. Pippity. P-I-P-P-I-T-Y. That's cool. So it knows when somebody's read an article and when they're at the end of it, it pops up. Mm-hmm. That's yep. cool. You wanted to ask a question. Uh, yes. I'm yeah, curious. so we're always trying to, you know, test things and get more people to the email list. Um, now we're going to be moving more toward just doing monthly webinars and getting people on the webinar, not necessarily, well, they'll still be signed up from the email list, but right. our goal for the site is just to funnel people into webinars. Yeah. Yeah. Webinars with other yeah. people like the one we're doing in April or webinars that you're doing with your own content or a mix of both? Yeah, so basically like any traffic that's coming to our site um, that's new, the goal will be them to get them to sign up to uh, like an internal webinar that's, that's self-hosted and then like we'll, we'll of course, be doing partnerships like we're going to be doing in April, where yeah. um, we'll promote that to to our email list of, of existing subscribers. Yeah. Right. So I'm curious, who, when you say we, who's on your team? You know, talk about the roles, the responsibilities, how things are delegated, and you know, are they part time, full time, project based? What 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 does that look like? Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about this because we've been growing our team a lot in the past year, um, and I'm just like so, so grateful for for them because I kind of I could not do this without them. Um, so we have a customer support person. Her name's Adrian. She is amazing. Um, she has like a degree in like international relations and like conflict resolution or something, and I didn't even know that before I hired her, but because of that, she's just awesome in terms of like, you know, when a customer has a problem or, you know, an issue or something, she's really, really great. And which is, which is good because I'm like horrible when it comes to customer support and, um, she's not. So, uh, we also have a project manager who works with us kind of like on a launch basis if we're doing a big launch. Her name is Megan, um, and she's just really good at systems and, and keeping things organized. And um, my wife has kind of a, a tertiary role in the business right now. She's kind of exiting more out of it, but she's mostly just handling clients, like high-end clients and stuff like that. And we most recently, uh, the last person that we just recently hired, his name's Dustin, and he's going to be coming on to help me with marketing and conversion and uh, copywriting and and design and stuff like that, which I'm really excited about because this past year or so, I just feel like my only job in, in my business is to write copy. And I don't know how it got that way, but like, that's what I do. Yeah. Uh, I just write copy. Yes. Well, welcome to the club. Yeah. So, so, so I'm curious where you go for your um, higher level support. Are you in a mastermind? Do you have coaches? 
you know, how, how are yeah. you managing yourself in, in terms of vision and strategy? Yeah, I think that's so vital. Um, and I don't know anyone that's kind of operating at a, at a high level that doesn't have that kind of support. Um, I have a, I have a marketing coach that I work with. I'm also involved in a, in a kind of live in-person mastermind that meets about three times a year. And um, I recently, you know, I'm, I'm looking at hiring like a strategic coach that's, that's also going to help me with the financial stuff because that's like the most neglected area of my business um, is, is the finances. I just like, I, I like numbers being sorted out. I like them being very clear. I like having a very clear vision and, and strategy, but um, it's definitely not my strong suit. So that's uh, that's what we're looking at getting help with now. Um, can you, can so you I share that we had a clear handle on that, we can be growing so much more. Are, are you doing your own bookkeeping or do you have a bookkeeper and a kind of a business management team or have you been doing that on your own? I have a bookkeeper and um, I'm not going to like bad mouth anyone, but the problem is he's not very uh, reliable. He probably so, doesn't, he doesn't really know your business. That, that was my experience with, uh, yeah. you know, the first several years of bookkeepers in my own business uh, is that, Ultimately, once I started to get a handle on the financials of my business, I discovered that, oh, you, my bookkeeper really needs to really understand my business. And now I have a very, very, very close uh -huh. working relationship with my, with my business managers. Um, or else, you That's know, awesome. they're, they're basically like data entry, you know, people as opposed to really being able to help you run the run the, the business and that is that's that sounds like that's a great next growth edge for you. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to have some help with that. Especially because like I you know, the way the books were done, I would just I would get them on a monthly basis or something from him and I would just blaze over it because I didn't understand what was going on. Yeah. Um you know, this, I guess this is the truth show, so yeah. be truthful. I'm yeah. not proud of that. So. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> because I, I think it's important for people to recognize that that's like a, it, it's, it's like, it's like a third level of business, right? Um, uh -huh. the, the first level is like just figuring out, okay, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and, and the second, the second yeah. level is how am I making my money and, and, and really figuring out that, that sales and marketing piece. And, and then the third level really is this piece that you're focusing on, which is where you're, where you actually begin to have a, a business business is when, is when you're focusing on the financial systems and, you know, the legal systems and, uh, it, yeah. it generally takes people a, a few years to be ready for that and so that kind of brings the next question is when you started the blog did you have a job working mm -hmm. for somebody else and, and then when did you switch over to not having a job yeah I was working so when I started the blog when I started started was in 2008 actually and our business has been official since uh, 2009 but from 2008 to 2009, I was I was working a full time job, working on on building the business, and um, yeah, I was working full time for a large nonprofit healthcare company, and um, you know, waking up early, trying to have a couple hours to work on things, trying to squeeze in time to work on things during lunch, um, you know, working sometimes at dinner, and. It was it was intense for a little while, and I, I kind of like put everything else uh, in my life on maintenance mode, not like neglect mode, but not really trying to make big breakthroughs in other areas, just because this was something that I wanted to make a big shift in. So yeah. yeah. And then when what was that turning point moment where you said, okay, I'm letting go of the day job. Um, and shifted over full time into into Illuminated Mind. 
It was when I think we had about like a three month track record of job replacement income that the business was bringing in. Got it. So we were able to kind of see this could this could work, this could be repeatable, and um, you know we were very cautious. Like some people, they just quit their job and like try to figure it out, and they don't have any savings and. Um, you know, that's, that's not what I recommend most people to do. I think that it's, it's better if you kind of have, have a plan and have a, have a strategy. So, you know, we had like six months worth of savings as well. And, uh, like I said, we had that three month history of income from the business. That's great. That's like, that's very, um, uh, non impulsive. <laughs> I was far. Yeah, I know. It was, I was really hard. Yeah, it was really hard because I wanted to be so impulsive throughout the whole time uh, I was working there. I wanted to quit every day, and some days I was like, "Oh, I could just, you know, I could just figure it out. Maybe I could just give my notice." But um, yeah, for better or worse, I tend to be as cautious when it comes to big decisions like that. That's good. So we've got just a few minutes, and then we're going to need about uh, you know ten, twelve minutes to wrap up the show. Um, but I wanted to you know just yeah. really open up an opportunity for you. What I, what I'd love is you know I'd love I'd love you to invite people to you know to opt in to your blog, and you know I know you just did the Trailblazers, so there's I don't know if there's any offers right now that you're making, but um, but you know in the interest of that, really just offering something you know some nuggets of of what you teach. So they really get a sense of, okay, now I know what Jonathan has to offer and, and I know where to find him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, basically what, what we do and, and what I help people with is really to get clarity on what it is that your offer to the world is and how you, how you serve people. And, you know, that sounds kind of simple, but it's actually um, kind of intricate in the way that we teach people this. We, we teach people how to focus on the person that's actively seeking what it is they have to offer. We focus on um, teaching people how to communicate an outcome and how to communicate a transformation that you bring to other people. Um, you know, what is the shared purpose of your offer? And how does it relate to a community that's bigger than you? And, you know, those are just a few of the elements. But once you put all of those things together, uh, your, your marketing for your business transforms in such a way that you don't have to really do a lot of selling of what you have to offer. Um, you simply have to present it to other people. And I think that's what good marketing is. Um, you know, it, it communicates the value of what you do, and when you present it to the right people, they they get it, and if they're in a position to buy, they, they buy. And that's you know that's what we do with Trailblazer. If people are interested in, in checking it out, they can go to um, we made a short little uh, film that you can watch that kind of describes the message, and it's at trailblazerjourney.com forward slash trailer, and you can watch that. It'll kind of let you know a little bit about what our message is about and you can subscribe there if you want to get some more free videos and stuff. So and that you was, can hit me up on Twitter too. Okay, and that yeah. and that video um, was the one that you made with uh, Jason Diggs? Yeah, yep. He's a good friend of mine. Jason. And so it's trailblazerjourney.com forward slash trailer. Trailer. I think we got it. Yeah. yeah. And um my 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 story is that your work is mostly for people making the transition out of, um, uh, out of kind of corporate, out of the jobby job into the business. But I'm um, get oh Jay Jay, Jay speak of the come devil. on over. We're talking to Jonathan Mead. Uh huh. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah he just gave the URL for the trailer. Right there. And um, let's say hi to <laughs> to Jason Diggs there. Um, and so my, my, my story is, is that your work is more for the, the person making the transition out of the job into the business, but the way I'm hearing you describe it now is it doesn't sound like that's really the case. You're also working with the entrepreneurial 
folks who already have made the leap. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's really about fifty fifty. I mean, whether whether you're in a situation where you're frustrated with your work and you feel like you're in a dead end job, or whether you feel like you're you're ready to just put your message out there and you already have a vision, you already have an idea, and you already have some type of foundation. Um, Trailblazer definitely applies. Um, either of those situations, but yeah. um, we, we definitely are passionate about helping people that want to make that transition. There's a lot of people out there that, that want to get kind of like paid to be who they are that already have something going and they need to refine it and they need to um, really just get it more crystallized and that's something we can certainly help uh, yeah. those people with too. So Jason Diggs is sitting here right next to us, the producer of your trailer. Are you able to see hey, us? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. And uh, what, what was it like working with this guy? He's amazing. I was really inspired to uh, really get into my own truth and what I was offering. And I had so much clarity in my own business just in the process of working with Jonathan. Not to mention the fact that he put a lot of trust in me uh, to do something that neither of us had ever done before. You know, having a full story marketing, like a full narrative marketing it's tricky. It's easy, you know. I assume it's easy to, to mess it up because yeah. it's it's. But it was fun. It was a blast. I flew out to Portland. We had a great director of photography named Zen, mm -hmm. and yeah. Cool. And certain things conspired while we were filming to make the project even better than I could even have imagined. That's so. the fun part of the yeah. That project. was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Well, you guys can watch that uh, at trailblazerjourney.com forward slash trailer. Cool. Well, I'm going to say goodbye because I got awesome. a video shoot in the next room. So. All right. Well, cool enjoy man. it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Enjoy the show. See you, Jonathan. See you, Jason. Thanks so much, man, for uh, stopping by. <laughs> and, Jonathan, you know, as you're talking right, about great. this, it's just it's it's occurring to me how, um, how much of a fit so much of what you're saying is with my Money Map program. So uh, I'm going to email yeah. you about that because um, yeah. there's pieces that I think Anyway, that there's there's some overlap, but there's um, also um, synergy there. Yeah, there's synergy. So anyway, we'll talk we'll talk more about that before our you our April time too. together. Yeah, and also uh, you evolve .me, cool. which is our um, our our landing page um, creator for non non technology types and soon to be course um, platform. Uh, so anyway, lot, lots more to talk about. This I, I really see this as, yeah. as just the beginning, just the very, 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 very little I know. precursor. I'm excited. Yeah. Cool, man. We got to get you out here to Boulder. When's yeah. that going to happen? That's Hell the, yeah. that's the real wife. question. Come on down. Yeah. I know. I got to do some like some skiing. I want to check out the check out the farm, and you know, I know you guys have an amazing community, so yeah. I think there's a a lot of fun and connection to be had out, out in Boulder. There's a lot, definitely a lot of similarities to uh, Portland yeah. as well. So, yeah. you know, if you guys ever make it out here, yeah. here on the West Coast, that would be a, a treat as well. Yes, we definitely would like to do that. So, all right, we'll have to, we'll have to trade some back and forth uh, by location stuff. And uh, thanks for joining us here today. Um, I'm going to see you on a webinar, and you're going to see me on a webinar in April, but we'll talk more about that uh, online. All right. Well, Thanks, Jonathan. Take care, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, have a beautiful rest of your, your show, Thank and you. Uh, hope you guys close it off with a bang. Thank right. you. Thank you. All right, bye, Jonathan. And for those of you looking for Jonathan Mead online, you can find him at illuminatedmind.net, illuminatedmind.net, and um, get a lot of illumination there for sure.